Father, I pray your hearts could be softened today, that when people leave this church, they will leave with a greater understanding of you, a greater understanding of your work, and a greater understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I want you to impact the life of people here this morning. In Jesus' name, release any chains on their heart and let my words be true and wisdom to flow through me. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today's message is about grace. What is grace? And why should grace be in the forefront of our relationship with God? Growing up, I used to hear that oh, God's grace is just about receiving what you wanted. For example, oh, by grace, I'll get a new car. By grace, I'll get a new job. By grace, I'll get a new house. But it's more than that. Like, don't get me wrong. You can receive these things if it's in God's plan for you. But grace is so much more than that. So we want to, I want to read a sermon. Well, Ifra's going to read it. Um, John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. Yeah, pick it up. So I'm going to read John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered round him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in, in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and continued to write, write in the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first until only Jesus was left. Only Jesus was left with the woman still standing. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Thank you. Um... So in this story, we see the Pharisees men. These are men who try to uphold the law of Moses. They used, to, they used this incident of a woman accused of adultery to, in a way to try to trap Jesus. The Pharisees said to Jesus, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? So back then, the Romans didn't allow the Jews to carry out death sentences. So if Jesus agreed to stone the woman, he would be in conflict with the Romans. But on the other hand, if Jesus had agreed to stone the woman, he would have been accused of being... If Jesus had agreed to stone the woman, he would have been accused of being uns, uh, unsupportive of the law. So, but Jesus, he was far from trapped. He had an answer full of wisdom that the Pharisees were not prepared for. So instead, Jesus said, if any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. But none of them were sinless, and there was only Jesus that was left. The only man without sin, but instead of punishing her for her sins, Jesus forgave her and said, go and live your life without sin. So I just wanted you to take a minute and think about this situation. This woman, she did not have to prove that she would never commit a sin again. She didn't have to wait until she'd done good deeds. She was forgiven instantly. She was forgiven before her lifestyle had changed. God forgives us for our sins, not because you follow laws, but only when you have a relationship with him. And this forgiveness is, earned, is not earned, it's freely given. The purpose of the law, the commandments that we see in the Old Testament, was not to make us holy, but to show we are sinful people and we all fall short of that law. And show us the deep need that we have in Jesus the deep need we have in Jesus for in our lives. Otherwise, we would not know how important he is. We need to realize that we are all sinners and not fight it. Because if we were not sinners, we wouldn't need a savior. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for us. He died for our sins. He died so we can have a direct relationship with God the Father. So when we make Christ Jesus our savior, 
God no longer sees us judged by the rules of the Old Testament, by the law of Moses, but as a person covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. God does not see our sins, but the righteousness and sinless life of Jesus. And this is the grace of God. This free gift of righteousness is for anyone who is willing to come humble themselves and receive it. For it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not in your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. So it's a gift. What is a gift? Marsha's going to find out and ask you guys what it is. So in order to make sure that we're all aware what a gift is and to help us to see what a great gift grace is, I'm going to go around and take you on a trip down memory lane to sometimes when you received gifts in the past. So would anyone like to tell me about a gift that they received? Like anyone? I'm sure you've all received gifts at some point, birthdays, Christmases and other times. Just pick anyone. So if you'd like to... <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone, if anyone would like to volunteer to just share about a gift that they received recently or even a long time ago that they really enjoyed. Yeah, I will come round. Um, was it last Mother's Day? My daughters gave me one of my favourite perfume and I wasn't expecting it and I was just like, wow, thank you very much, it's good. And how did that make you feel? I was really grateful and I thought, yeah, I really, I really appreciated it. I didn't pay for it, it just came. So thank God. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else would they like to share? Man like Steve wants okay. to talk. Go back in a moment. <laughs> My old granddaughter gave me, gave both of us um, a lawn, electric lawnmower for Christmas. Which the petrol one was hard for my husband to put, so we enjoy using it. So we give God thanks and gifts. And thank God that there's so many kind people around. <laughs> I'll go back to Steve. This is a gift everyone would love to have. One of my closest friends got me tickets for um, a tour of Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Should have gave them back, mate. That was very really good. Really good. I know you, you're, you're all envious of that, but uh, it was good. It was good. Thank you. And can I ask, was there a special occasion? Did you do anything to receive the gift, or did they just give you the gift at? It was my birthday. Nice, nice. It was very nice, very nice. <laughs> Would anyone else like to share? Okay, two, I'll come around here. <coughs> My gift is a talent. I'm artistic. It's a God-given gift. Amen. I don't have to try it too much. And I also share it with children in school. Amen. A great gift from God. Thank you for sharing that one. Um, to me, the best gift I was ever given was life. Um, I feel like my parents didn't make, have that decision in their mind to work with God in that sense, even though they were Christians at the time, I wouldn't miss it today, so I said it was a result of that, God was coming to my life through that. that. Amen, that's really powerful. Hello everybody. If we are talking about materialistic things, comes and go, it's not the true things. If we are talking about grace, I'm sure today is gift from the God because Josh is standing on the pulpit and sharing the word of God. It is a great, great, great and great gift for me and also our whole family and the church. Thank you so much. Amen. I would say that these gifts are really powerful and just a great reminder that to receive gifts, they're gifts because you don't need to do anything to receive them. I will pass back over to Josh. Okay, so I've got, um, so a few weeks ago, 
uh, at my company where I work as an accountant, they were going through uh, a process of getting some more investment in. So my manager said to me, look, Josh, you're going to be working a lot of hours, probably staying late most days, so we're going to look into getting you a bonus or some, like, some time in lieu. So I was thinking, like, great, well, who doesn't like a bonus? Um, so a few weeks passed, well, a couple months. Um, I was staying late, getting there early. If I was saying, like, you better get a good bonus, because always well, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> she'd yeah, she already spent it. Um, so I went to work on a Friday, and there was a bottle of champagne on my desk. And I was like, whoa, well, what's this? I went to my manager, I was like, how come I got a bottle of champagne? He goes, oh, this was a gift for all of your hard work. And then, OK. All right, let's, let's see who's paying attention. Was that a gift? Yes or no? No, no it wasn't a gift because I had to work for it. It was a reward for all my additional work. Uh, I was, actually, I was really angry I didn't get the bonus. <laughs> like, so yeah, so was Zifra. Uh, being the Asian in me, the first thing I did was Googled how much the bottle cost. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> the bottle was like, it was about 40, 50 pounds, and I was like, oh, I can't. If I was like, if I was like, if I, shall I put it on eBay or something? I'd try to get the money. She's like, no, stop being, drink it on our anniversary or something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but on the other hand, if I came to work late every day, if I was on the internet every day, just sometimes I am, um, and then my manager said to me, look, here's a bottle of champagne as a gift, then for your hard work, then that would be a gift, but that's just not natural, it doesn't happen. I probably would have had a, got a disciplinary, eventually got fired, but... I tell you, this gift of grace is not natural. It's not natural to be a sinful person and be given a crown of glory on your head. It's not natural to be forgiven for your sins that you have yet to commit. It's not natural to be given heaven when your past shows that you deserve hell. And we need to take advantage of this grace. It says in Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 24, the righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through this redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This glory is perfection. Therefore, no one is declared righteous by what they do only by the grace, the gift of righteousness, which is something that we cannot earn. The grace of God that was given to us, Jesus paid the penalty for our sins and received... <sighs> Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins and rescued us from eternity in hell, separated from him. Not a single person on this earth can live up to his glory. Every person who lived or will live on this earth will be corrupted by sin except one man. You may be better than other people that you know, but are you perfect? Because even one single sin is enough to corrupt you. And we are all, every single one of us are in the same boat. But fortunately, this gift of righteousness is also for everyone. You just need to believe that Jesus died for you and that all your sins, past and future, are forgiven simply through the faith you have in that truth. So when you pray, when you pray, you come boldly to God, declaring, I am the righteous of God in Jesus Christ. All my sins are forgiven. Even though I'm not perfect, my God loves me and he sees me covered by the sinless blood of Jesus Christ. So as believers... We need to take advantage of this undeserved gift of righteousness. Come boldly. You no longer have to feel ashamed of wrong things you have done in the past and sins you have committed because the Lord does not condemn you and he will not condemn you for sins in the future. And as shown in Romans chapter 6 verse 1, nothing can nullify this unmerited favour. So when someone comes to you with a question like, Josh... Doesn't this forgiveness for all sins business and this Jesus Christ just mean give you people a license to go ahead and sin? Does it? No, it does not. Because when you grow in this knowledge of Christ Jesus, when you grow in this knowledge of what Jesus has done for you and the love God has for you, it leads you to become better people. And 
It leads you to want to remove the negative things that affect this relationship that you have with God. Like, looking back at my life now, my life was filled with drugs and crime. I was reckless, I was inconsiderate, and I was easily thin influenced by drugs and money. Like, when I, money was the first thing I used to think about when I woke up. Last thing I used to think about when I went to sleep. And then I used to think about what is the best way of getting money. I will be honest with you, seeing as we're in church and that. Um, I, was, I was a cannabis dealer, but for some reason I thought it was, I was better than my mates because they were doing things that were a lot worse in my eyes in the way they used to make their money. I used to think that their sins were bigger than mine. For some reason I thought I was, in that regard, I thought I was somehow more holy than them. So it's like we look back in the story with the Pharisees and the woman caught in adultery, the Pharisees thought they were more holy because of the sins they committed were not as big as the woman. But in God's eyes, they are all the same. We have all fallen short and there is no measurement on individual sins. It's not a point scoring system. So this revelation of grace in my life stopped me being a heavy weed smoker and doing reckless and illegal activities Ask my sister, she knows. Um, I can say that God honestly has changed my life. Believe me, I'm not perfect and it wasn't an instant change, but I'm growing and I thank God I'm not where I used to be. For everyone that is here today, please trust me when I say, God can change anything in your life too. You may feel like you're going through a situation that no one can help with, but there is a man a man that was fully God and fully man who has already got you out of your situation by dying for you. And all you need to do is believe in him. Like you may be suffering in many ways. You may be, feel like nothing or no one can help. You may be in an addiction that you have given up, given up on. You may be in the midst of financial difficulties where you see no end to. You may be suffering with a depression and you feel like you've tried everything but nothing seems to work. But luckily, luckily for you, for us, we have the offer to receive this gift of righteousness. So stop trying to fix your problems and just rest, just rest in his presence. John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. The devil is a liar. I want you to believe that if your circumstances or your physical or mental sickness is not getting better, it's not because, better, it's because you don't have enough faith or you're not doing enough tasks to prove that you are a child of God. The devil wants you to believe that you can do it all alone and you can help yourself and then you don't need God. But to, today I tell you that self-improvement books that focus on you using your own willpower or your discipline can only take you so far. With results that only last as long as your willpower lasts. So stop putting your confidence in the flesh. God has a simpler way, a higher way, and that's just by resting in him. We look, back, we look at the Psalms uh, chapter uh, 23. Like a lot of people know that. They quote it. Um, word for word, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He, le he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. This in itself is a picture of resting in God's grace. So I want to just say, look, forget yourself, forget your worries and be occupied in Christ when you read the Bible and see his compassion, his love, his power and his gift of righteousness. You will see the spirit of God work inside you and in your circumstances. You will see personal miracles happening in your life and the people around you that you pray for. This is through faith and resting in God's presence. My, myself and many people, we have faith in God, but we struggle to rest. We let our prayers grow in frustration or let the devil's attack. Let us believe that we're not good enough to receive an answer. Maybe you have been waited like a long time to see his answer and you wonder like has God forgotten me? Has he forgotten my prayers that I've been saying? But I can tell you the truth, he has not forgotten. There's an answer coming. 
You just have to wait. Maybe that answer is yes to your situation. Maybe it's no. Or maybe it's just to continue to wait and listen to God and just rest in his finished work on the cross. The more revelation we have of Jesus, the more our life will prosper and be peaceful. But this peace and prosperity is not multiplied by doing more, but by learning to rest more in the knowledge of God and the love he has for us. It says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So in closing, it should be our passion to see more of Jesus. Um, remember that first time you came to church and you felt the impact of the love of Jesus. Like you would regularly come to church, you would listen to your favourite pastor. And you, or maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, you will play worship songs in your bedroom, in your car, but in time you let that desire fade away and let Jesus become a side issue. But Jesus should be more than a side issue, I tell you more than one day a week person. I pray that you just do not miss out in the power in Jesus. Nothing is impossible through our God. Healing of sicknesses, removal of addictions, peace in life, an abundant life, an eternity with God is your gift. Just come to him. Just come to him. Like today, I just want to pray for people who do not have this relationship just to come to him and see your life change. For people that have let this relationship fade away because of life, could be work, could be money, could be kids, partners, just reconnect with him and you'll see changes in your life. I want guys to all just close your eyes, take a minute and see what God's answer is. Then prayers that you had that you haven't got an answer for, just connect with him now and try and listen to God. I'm going to pray for us now. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for the words that have been spoken today. And Lord, I just want to ask you to open up the hearts of everyone here today. And despite their circumstances or whatever anyone might be going through, that we can learn to rest in the comfort of your love and your grace and just truly embrace this wonderful, amazing gift that we've been given. Lord, I want to ask you to help us to realise that it's not the position that we are in that needs to change, but the perspective of how we see our lives. Help us to realise that you have not given up on us and that you are our loving Father, Lord. And just like a father would never give up on his child, you will never give up on us. Lord, help us to remember that the struggles we go through are not to destroy us, but to help define us. And through the heartache, you will help us find the purpose and peace in the pain. So Lord, I just wanna thank you for sending your son to die for us and for giving us the gift of righteousness. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen. So, the leadership training group just want to say if anyone um, is here today and wants us to um, pray for you or if there's anything that 
is on your mind or you feel like after what Josh has spoken about you want to come forward today and just come to the front or if you want to stay in your seats we'll come to you just whatever you're comfortable with just just come forward today and just let us pray for you and just feel that love of God and just rest in his rest in his grace so yeah just take your time and just come forward we're going to be going into cornerstones and during the song if you want to come forward then please do come forward and we'll get someone to pray for you We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.